After a huge day of severe storms yesterday, we have even more severe weather ahead for both today and tomorrow across parts of the United States. This does include the potential for damaging winds, large hail, and even a few tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the next couple of days in terms of severe weather, and then why the weather pattern is going to change entirely as we go throughout the rest of this week, with a major summer cooldown coming to a large chunk of the country. But let's begin with what's happening across the United States this morning, which obviously we had that massive complex of thunderstorms roll across the Midwest yesterday. A full-blown large wind event, at least at the bare minimum, if not a derecho, ended up occurring yesterday in Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, and ended up dying out as it went into Ohio. Still a lot of the remnants right now going across Ohio early this morning, but most of this activity has died down. It's not nearly as intense as it once was. It produced a ton of damage, which we're going to talk more about here in just a second, and there were also tons of tornadoes yesterday back over in Illinois. We had an unbelievable viewership yesterday, by the way. We peaked at 43,000 viewers at one time here on YouTube. I just want to say thank you to anybody that tuned in. I'm glad I can help so many of you guys out. It was unbelievable how many people we had watching yesterday for such a significant event that did happen there in the Midwest yesterday. But luckily, this is moving out. We are going to start to dry out and cool out back over in parts of the Midwest today and tomorrow. So nicer weather is ahead here for the rest of the week in the Midwest. We are also watching some convection that did occur back over in the central plains yesterday this has been kind of dying out as well and so as we go throughout the day today we're probably gonna have more of this where there will be some more severe storms in the central plains later today now this is the overall storm reports from yesterday from the storm prediction center and you'll notice right off the bat we have a lot of blue and we actually had some down over in the southeast but really the two concentrations of where we had the most damage reports were both over in areas like the midwest and also back over in new york and pennsylvania where there were two mesoscale convective systems, which technically we had multiple over in the Midwest, but there were two areas that were focused in on the threat for wind yesterday. We had over 600 wind reports, which is insane. We also had 45 hail reports. There were only three tornado reports, but I can assure you that number is definitely going to be higher. Uh, we had a lot of radar confirmed tornadoes yesterday via radar on our live stream. I would expect this number to probably at least be a dozen from yesterday, just purely due to how many tornadoes we did see on radar, and also a couple of them that we did have visual on. We do have more severe weather ahead for the United States. We have a risk here today for tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday, and then things begin to wind down as we go into wacky weather Wednesday. But begin with today, it's another large area for severe weather. Luckily, no enhanced risk or anything like that, but we do have a couple areas that we'll be watching today, mostly this afternoon into the evening for there being some severe weather. Right now, we do have a slight risk back over in parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast for areas like New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, and a few other states as well. And then another slight risk back over in the Central Plains, which honestly, this has been pretty typical for the last several days, where the main concern in both regions will be damaging winds and hail today. Notice the slight risk is there for damaging winds. There will be a chance, though, for a couple of tornadoes later today. I think the risk is going to stay low. I wouldn't be shocked if we got a small 5% tornado risk somewhere in New York, but I think overall it's mostly going to be a low chance. Maybe two tornadoes or so there in New York back into Vermont later today. We also have another 2% tornado risk in Nebraska, so again, relatively low threat, but it's something that you want to be staying weather aware for. Have ways to receive alerts. I don't think we'll be live today on the channel, just something, again, that you should at least have a mental note of throughout the day today in case you have any outdoor activities or might just be at home playing Madden or whatever you might be doing. As we go into Wednesday, we have another risk for severe weather over on the East Coast into the Northeast, where there will be more severe weather, but the main concern for Wednesday will be damaging winds and hail. It's not a non-zero tornado risk, but it's low enough to the point where the storm Prediction Center does not have a tornado risk outlined at this time. And then High Plains severe weather will continue. We got yet again another threat for severe weather in areas like Colorado, Nebraska, Wyoming, and a couple of other states there. Again, the wind concern is the main threat. There's right now no tornado risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center for Wednesday. Now, today's tornado risk is going to be relatively low, but I do think as we go into the late morning and into the early afternoon hours, that is when this tornado threat is going to peak across parts of New York. Notice how the tornado parameter values right around 1 to 2, which does indicate at least a low to low medium risk across areas near Buffalo, back through Rochester. And then as we go throughout the afternoon, that tornado risk will be pretty consistent. Again, pretty low threat, but not zero. As long as there are discrete cells out there, there will be at least some level of a tornado risk. Now, this is the timing for today. 
today. We will have a cluster of storms coming out of Lake Erie later this morning. Any storms that can stay organized could produce a tornado. It might be a mesoscale convective vortex at this point, which does allow for more spin. So we might end up seeing a tornado or two as this does move into western New York. But again, main concern will be damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. Just after lunchtime, these storms continue to move east and they will likely organize into a bit more of an organized line of thunderstorms. And then as we go later into the afternoon and into the early evening hours, we will still be watching for some damaging winds in Vermont, New York, uh, sorry, New Hampshire, as well as back over to Massachusetts. By 7 to 8 o'clock tonight, this will start to weaken as it approaches the Atlantic Ocean waters back over in Maine, which those are quite cold right now, so the atmosphere is overall going to be a bit more stable there over near the Atlantic Ocean. Tornado parameter values back over in Nebraska today. They're relatively low over here as well, but we might see an isolated tornado or two. There's a little bit of spin there today, so I wouldn't rule out a land spout or maybe a tornado. Storms will be out there this morning in Missouri, but again, mostly just isolated damaging winds. This afternoon, storms will start to explode in Nebraska and northern Kansas, where the main concern will be damaging winds, isolated hail, and then maybe a brief spin-up or tornado, and then we're done with that after about 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, so not too shabby there. Now, beyond tomorrow, the weather is going to change entirely, as we do have a large trough that is coming out of Canada. It's actually going to allow for colder air to usher into the Midwest, and eventually that'll go all the way into the central and southern plains, where a big-time cooldown is coming to the United States in the middle and end of this week. Once we go into the weekend, things are going to be very quiet across most of the country. We will continue to see an active weather pattern over in the southern plains, the southeast, and the east coast, but no organized severe weather events are in the forecast, which is great news because I will be going on vacation probably at some point here as we go into next week with Connor Croft, by the way. We actually have a golf match this weekend, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Once we go into Monday into Tuesday, things will still be pretty quiet across most of the country. We're going to have a pretty dominant ridge in the southwest, and this will basically allow for any low-pressure systems that are organized, in a sense, to stay well out of the United States. With that said, we could see something try to sneak down into the Central Plains during the middle or end of the week, but again, it just doesn't look really that concerning at this point. Overall, temperatures for the next few days are going to be dropping across most of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, and even the Southern Plains, where a colder air mass will sit there probably all the way through next week. So really nice weather is in the forecast beyond today. The Cloud Prediction Center giving a very high likelihood of below average temperatures across a large chunk of the United States as we go into the late weekend and into early to mid next week. So again, if you're looking forward to some colder weather, I got good news for you. There will be some colder weather with high temps in like Texas, for example, where many areas will be falling into the 90s and even down into the upper 80s for high temperatures. Now, here's the future radar for the next several days. So notice how this high pressure system, it's going to be a surface-based high pressure system, is really going to start to dominate in the Midwest. And that's going to leave mostly any precipitation to be down in the southern or eastern tier of the United States. And then once we go into the weekend, things are going to stay relatively dry. We might see some sort of little storm system try to sneak into the central or northern plains, but I don't think it's going to be concerning enough for us to be live for anything. So again, I don't think we're going to be live really much at all for severe weather for the next couple of weeks, bearing any major changes, but it's going to continue to stay very quiet for the most part when it comes to severe weather. We'll continue to stay active in the southern and eastern tier of the country. Elsewhere, it does look to be relatively quiet. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to see any severe weather at all. It's just going to be a pretty low risk, it looks like, for really any day over the next 7 to 10 days. So overall, just make sure you subscribe to the channel. If anything does pop up, we'll keep you posted. But 